Hey guys, more fun with Pathfinder today. Um, this is, I think, the third video in our series about Pathfinder. And in this one, I'm going to go through the um, different icons on your Pathfinder palette or options panel and just go through what each one of them does. So really simply, we're going to make a rectangle and then you can alt click, drag that rectangle over here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and make another one over here just to give you an idea. So right now it looks like this, uh, but each one of these shapes is separate. So I'm gonna select all of them, go into my Pathfinder window and just go through each one of them. So this is Unite and that does exactly what you would think it does which is just makes it all one um, shape. So the dividing lines in here have been removed and the only thing that you're left with is this path that goes all the way around your shape. So that's that. Okay, next one is the minus front. So that one, if you go uh, click on that one, that takes away sort of everything except for this one part in the back. It's also creating what we call a compound path. So if you click option and select, you'll have um, the shapes that are still sort of there, but they're empty. Okay, so we're gonna go through this one. That is intersect. Oh. And that gets rid of everything. Uh, now, let's go back. And this is divide. So you can see that I didn't group it and it's just treating it all as one shape here. And then that one is to trim. Now that would trim off uh, whatever's on the outside of something. And then, um, again, this is the same thing. It, it just, so this is merge and this is unite and they're very similar. And then the next one is crop, outline, and minus back. So we can go through each one of those. And that would be cropping out everything except for your most recent shape. Uh, and then outline, that <laughs> makes everything turn into outlines. You can see properties panel. Uh, you have apparently no stroke, but there's still these visible lines here. Okay, go back, and the last one is the minus back. So again, cropping out everything except for your um, last most recent overlap here. Okay, so a couple of applications. Uh, let's say you have this and then you want to write something on the inside here. So we're going to write, go ahead and write Panther Pride. And in my character panel, you can see my acumen variable concept. If you've been with me more than a week, you know that that's my font of choice right now. Um, this is the Baybass New. We, I use this quite a bit for our Panther branding. A lot of our apparel has that font. Um, and then this is a recent font that I've used. Uh, we used it for baseball. A couple of other things. So we'll go here, the arrow. And I'm going to bring my kerning down way down so that my letters are actually touching. 
Yep. And I know that looks really silly right now, but we're going to actually go ahead and do just an outline. Turn it bigger. And we're going to even go lower than that. Okay. I don't know what's going to look good here. Maybe we'll do the whole thing. It might not look good. So we're going to go here and in your Pathfinder, I'm going to um, uh, well, first I'm going to create outlines. There we go. Okay. So this is basically what I wanted to get to. Now, whether you have to create outlines on this, I'm not sure. I just went ahead and did it uh, because it didn't produce the effect that I wanted to when it was just in the type format. But right now, um, what I did was I created outlines and then if you expand or unite, or probably we'll do the same thing with merge, you get this outline of these words, but you don't have any of the intersection uh, visible there. So, and I'm going to go ahead and change my uh, stroke. And definitely going to change my stroke color. Let's try white and see how that looks. It's a little heavy. Okay, so this is kind of the end result that I was looking for, but I would tell you that it's a little hard to read. Oh. And so the legibility is very important here. So I would go back probably and... Um, make my kerning a little bit higher. Right now it's like negative, it was, you know, negative 73. That was really high. And my letters are very tight and it's making it a, not quite as legible. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with this, but just remember that for your writing, this is a really powerful tool to use in Pathfinder because you can um, unite overlapping words and just make it look really interesting that way. If you do that, um, and let's say, let's pick a different font here. That one. Ooh. Okay, and we're making it really big. And this, I'm actually just going to get rid of that. And you can see my kerning. Oh, yeah, so it was 112, which is really, really high, or really low, I should say. Gonna switch to outline, and I'm just gonna trying to find a font that there you go overlaps really well. Now that actually I think I like the overlapping lines there. That one I bet would work. Okay, there we go. Yes. This is going to look good. So there's the panther. And now I'm going to go into, just so you know, artboard, fit to selected art, so I can make my artboard that big. Okay. All right, let's see how that looks now. Now we're going to go into Pathfinder.
Um, And again, it's not letting me do it without creating outlines. So that's fine. There we go. So that's a little better. It's more legible, it's straightforward. And you can see there. And uh, so now in this case, what I'm gonna do is go into my blue. RLHS blue, make it bigger. And then on my um, effects, I'm gonna see if I can add something here. There we go. And say okay on that. And then I'm going to command copy and then shift command V, which is one that I love. And then on that one, I am going to take off the Gaussian blur. Oh, excuse me. Let's delete that. And then we're going to change this to white. And we're going to bring that down. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. So basically what I did here was you create like a neon glow effect. So you have this um, <laughs> it's my leftover. So you have this panther, which you've united, and then you do the Gaussian blur, and that is, again, on your properties panel right there. Under appearance, you can go to effects, and then that's the Gaussian blur is there. And then I command C, which is to copy, and then shift command V is to paste in place. So it will paste another copy of whatever you've selected on, like exactly on top of that um, other one. And that one I just changed the stroke thinner and made it white because you know the glow, it starts really bright and vibrant on the inside and then it gets darker and fuzzier on the outside. So hopefully that was helpful and a great application of Pathfinder tool.